Okay. And anyway, that you go in there, and I sat in there, and we, we were feeding homeless people tuna fish sandwiches. We went inside, and you know what they were doing in there? Fighting and screaming. That's what they did. You know about when you and Sylvia and Bob Polo went there? Yeah, we were feeding people, homeless people uh -huh. outside the office. Then we went inside. I don't remember why, but we were waiting inside for some reason. I think, I think maybe Sylvia had to go... And it was fighting and screaming. The, state, yeah. the city employees or the homeless people? Pretty much everybody. <laughs> but the city employees weren't really doing their They didn't give a damn, right? They weren't right? doing anything. Right, they were just sitting there collecting their check for ten, and they were helping the homeless, right? They weren't even pretending. Not even pretending? Like giving you an attitude of just getting lost? Just sitting there in their booths going... Oh, let me look at the camera on you. That's, that's their expression? Right. As you're bothering me. Why are you? Why are you? Why are you preventing me from going to lunch? <laughs> Can't you see I need to go out and smoke a cigarette? Why are you pretending you're masturbating or why I'm reading my <laughs> pornography in the bathroom? <laughs> oh God, that even went on too. I don't. City employees. Oh, oh, of course. Oh, that's like me. I told you about sitting there waiting a half an hour, and then two soldiers came out of the men's the men's booth in the women's department. J. C. Penny. I said, these guys, what are they doing? I realized now, I knew that it, was, it, weren't, it wasn't a sex thing. I thought, well, they're taking a break because they're tired of standing on their feet. And Michael Casino told me, no, they were probably on their f iPhones. And I realized I had made a phone call from there, so there was a connection. Even though it was one floor underground, they were probably sitting in there with their fadigs down, sitting on the, on the bath. On the, you can imagine how boring it is guarding the mall. And yet, if somebody, a terrorist went in there and blew up, and they'd all be saying, how come the two guys that were supposed to be protecting the mall just happened to be downstairs in the bathroom when the mall went <laughs> See, all Because they might be even half of their time. All you have to do is, is, is try to arrest somebody for shoplifting and then say, uh, give me a blowjob and I'll let you go. It's very simple. You're talking about security, security people. Security guards, yeah. You've had pe security guards do that to you? No, but I you know girls who. No. Oh, you Police, didn't? please do that. But I have. You no, know, it's funny. I asked Marsha about that, and she said she never made that allegation. I, I would say I've heard of it many times. Oh, you have? Yeah. Or maybe Marsha was just they didn't find it attractive enough or something. No, it was probably just didn't you know like certain people get a. Well, they knew Marsha, like, she'd be going to the anvil to meet Willie, and they'd just pull over and say, okay, okay, Marsha, it's your night to go in. And she said, I'm just walking to the anvil. I'm not out hooking or anything. They just had a quote to me. So there's, so there's a hooker. We know she's a hooker. They, you know the time that Morty Manford said he would defend, he, Marsha was down, and Morty Manford had become a lawyer? He said, Marsha, what are you doing here? And Marsha said, I was just sitting out. She was sitting on the steps up by the project, and the cops came by and said, move, or if you're still here, when we come back, we're going to ticket you. So she was still there when they came back. She wasn't hustling, she but they, she then. got arrested, and she was falsely arrested for, for when she wasn't hooking, and right? Loitering, loitering with intent to process. Well, that's what they said, but the thing was, she wasn't really, she would tell us. But anyway, so she was taken in, and so uh, Morty Manford, who had been president of GAA, said, oh, Marsha, he said, I'll fight this case. I'll get you off. So they called Marsha, the judge called Marsha up to the counter, and Morty Manford stepped forward, I'm, I'm her attorney, your honor. Marsha pleads not guilty. And they brought out this file that he said was about eight inches thick or six inches thick. And the, the judge looked at Morty and said, are you kidding? This, this person has an arrest record for prostitution going back to 1962. <laughs> and that was, that was about 1976. <laughs> Or 90, 97. I mean, you can't judge by prior events. Or maybe 1980. But I'm saying the point of the matter is that they get to the point where the cops, they just have a quota to meet. They they, just matter, you know what a guy who headed the Stonewall raid told us? What? He, he apologized for the way the police treat the gay community. He said because it was an easy way to score arrests. Like police are raided and given raises, like how many arrests they make. So who wants to go out and arrest a guy that's a drug dealer or a gun runner? They might the knife you, so they go out and get a guy in a toilet or lead him into trying to make a proposition or just know that he's gay. They arrest him for homosexuality, and they've got their arrest. They've got their quota. They, they've done their promotion. They haven't put their lives at risk. If, if the police had nothing else to do, they'd arrest each other because that's all they want to do. 
Why aren't they usually protect each other? They, they usually no, they suck each other's dicks. Oh, they don't do that either. Why well, do you have to be vulgar when I have a decent interview I'm not, going? I am not being vulgar. I'm being honest and direct. I mean, I knew one liberal cop who was married to Tony Roan. And he was, you know what, they called I mean, him the liberal cop. cop. Because she was a Let lesbian. me tell you, he was a wonderful man. They called him the liberal cop. Now, I'll tell yeah. you what happened. He was down in the subways, and this guy jumped the turnstile. And he went over to the guy and said, you shouldn't have done that. And the guy said, I know. And he said, I have to take you in. The guy said, okay. And he turned around. He put him in handcuffs. He took him down to the precinct, took him into the precinct, turned him over to the death sergeant. They took off the handcuffs. And this guy suddenly went wild. He had the strength of 10 men. It took about six officers to get him back under control. And then all the officers came around and said, how in the world did you ever get that guy in handcuffs all the way down here to the precinct? And I always say it shows that psychology works better than brute strength. You know what he did is he went up and said, gosh, you shouldn't have done that. And the guy, of course, said, yeah, and he treated the person decently. He said, I have to take you. And the guy said, well, I know. So he turned around and let him put the handcuffs on. I guess by the time he got down to the precinct, the guy had, the guy's high or buzz or whatever he was on had worn off. And he realized he was about to be thrown in jail for the first chance that the handcuffs came off. He went wild. And I think it's a great story of how the liberal cop proved the psychology. And that's what policing is all about, you know? Fuck like, police. No, Mar M Michael was rattling my gates and had me trapped in the store one night. And I called the police and I said, look, there's this guy who picks garbage. And he's rattling my gates and pounding on my door. And I'm trapped in my store with my dog, but I don't want him arrested. So they sent a squad car around. I parked across the street from the store. Michael saw the squad car immediately split. I took the Cooey on a leash, <coughs> opened the door, went out, pulled down the gates, locked the gates, and saw the cops never said a word to me. They followed me around the corner till I was safely down the steps at the, at the pass station. And that I call that good police work. Like Michael didn't get busted, but they safely rescued me from my store. You know, they didn't come and charge him with clubs. I told them I didn't want him arrested. He was somebody that I knew. I was just just hounding me for money or something, which he was. Rusty, I'm, I mean, Randy, I'm going to call the cops. And tell them I'm holding you a prisoner. <laughs> That's why I told Michael that he locked the door. He said, but it, he said if I locked the door, she'd call the cops and come and arrest me. <laughs> he was. He had a register as a tenant in this department, and you'd be a tourist. <laughs> you both, you both, and then go get him, and he would have a mental elite, but in, in and out of more nut houses since the age of 15 for alcoholism and, and everything, right? And they would look you up, and you would have this history of mental illness. And they would say these are these are two movies, and they would end up. I don't, they don't, I don't know where the padded room is. I think it's in Jersey City now. So I would have come home from. I would have come home. Randy, Randy, I would have come home. My, it was bad room. enough coming Look home. Look at it. Look, padding right there. This is all padding. It's a padded room. It's all, it's a, but this, this is, is mayhem because my apartment is just integrated because I've been moving stuff around. I just got back from the from picketing with the gay Russians over there, yeah. and with the signs that I had to pack up and go on an instant cruise and to run to. I had two days. I ended up Sunday. I was dead tired. And I had to be out of here. I had to move the truck on Wednesday. And I didn't even have time to unpack that stuff. I had to pack. I packed for three days going down to Philadelphia. I took, I, you would have thought I was moving to Philadelphia. I took, and guess what? what? I did. I took much more than I needed, but guess what? Right. One thing I took, which was, you told me, Randy, you can only take half the stuff. Yeah. I would have thrown away because I took three ties. A Statue of Liberty tie, American flag tie, and a love tie. And I probably would have taken tie. the love tie it's out. Love In the tie. end, I wore the love tie because the champ, the gay, gay marriage thing is love right. wins. Right, exactly. So the one thing I would have left, so even though you, I, what I did is I took all my choices. I had a black tuxedo if I wanted to wear it at the Pops concert. Uh -huh. I didn't know how formal it would be. Instead, I went just my white. I just went in my, my, my that painted Blinders. shirt, that painted shirt that I took, John Helicker. I paid sixty dollars to John Howard to repaint that flag shirt. Just some kind of anyway, so I'm in this. So that's the uh, 
So anyway, so we have now talked about our adventures and so 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 actually social server, you were telling me people live on seven dollars a day and people think they have it made because they have a free apartment. Right. And seven dollars they won't so buy it's a room, right? <laughs> right. So they but it won't buy two subway it won't buy a return subway ticket and a coffee and paper. Right. And they're expected to live on that for the rest of their lives every day with no recourse. And that's why we need to do more for the people that really need it. Or the doctors and the nurses. The, the oh, the doctors, they know to the run up the bills. They, oh. they need it all. Oh, they need it all. Oh, they'll put you in. The, if you need, if you feel a restroom, you just go and check in the mental hospital like Jamie would. They'll put you in for three days and I'm feeling suicidal. And Hoboken or, the, the, or Medicaid will get a bill for about, about $3,000. I just want to electrocute me through my nipples so I get off in the last few seconds. <laughs> Is that what you're, is that you're that's, thinking about doing? What, yeah. They'll definitely be, want, need a psychiatric evaluation and MRI. High. <laughs> They'll have, they won't find your medical records from Arizona or Portland. They'll probably have to do new tests. Oh, well, anyway, that's enough. We get an idea how the system works with this it video. It looks like me there. You're missing yeah, it. Thank you so much. Oh, God. It is. It's somebody, what happened? I don't know. It was like she blew up. A, a, it's like it's like some it, garbage it dump. Like Arizona. Yeah, and there's a woman there that looks very, like, like, very heavy. She does. She's a homeless person. Anyway. Huh? And I think that's not a woman. It, it, it is a woman. Transsexual. You think so? A homeless yeah. transsexual? A woman, yeah. Someone. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. I'm running out of space. Bye-bye.